When I was young and first delving into the world of Japanese animation, one of the first things that struck me was how violent many of the shows were. Graphic depictions of mutilations were not only more plentiful when compared to the western market, but the intent behind them was so radically different. Sure, the cartoony slapstick of Looney Tunes and early Disney was majorly influential, but that kind of violence is sterile, meant to amuse rather than disgust or thrill. Even the more adult-oriented programming of the 90s and early aughts, while certainly being more graphic than their child-friendly counterparts, still fell into the slapstick camp. Even The Simpsons, grounded as it was in its first couple seasons, still had characters survive very serious trauma with seemingly little injury. Even a lot of the alt cartoon scene fell into this camp. For example, Ed and Eddie creator Danny Antonucci has a lot of cartoons that I would argue are slapstick, just with more... gore. When considering the western adult animated market, I can't think of many violent shows that really get mainstream attention, nor can I think of many shows that treat their violence with the seriousness it deserves. Anyway, I certainly don't profess to be an expert on Japanese culture, but from my limited understanding I was at least able to glean that animation is much more respected over there. In the West, especially in the USA and Canada, most cartoons are made for children. They might sneak the occasional dirty joke past the censors, but these are regarded as easter eggs for the parents who are forced to watch these with their children. Even today, the vast majority of cartoons are marketed and censored using children as their target demographic. In Japan, however, animation, and to a greater extent comic books, are understood to be just another type of artistic expression. While not as commonplace as many western otaku types like to convince themselves it is, it's certainly understood that just because something is animated doesn't mean it has to be family friendly. Now, if I might digress a little bit, I think it is also clear that family friendly means something very different in Japan than it does in the United States. Stereotypically, Americans are seen as people who are terrified of sex but are super cool with violence, but that's only ostensibly true and mostly applies to live action works. When it comes to media made for children, we are as conservative as possible with the blood and the bits. This may be where I air my ignorance about Japanese culture, but it does not seem to be the case there. I mentioned Popey the Performer on my favorite anime list, which you can click here to see, please do it, I need the validation, oh god! Though there is not a lot of information about it on the English web, I was at least able to learn that they were bumpers, made for the all-cartoon satellite network Kids Station. Think the white text on black background in-betweens on Adult Swim, or these Nickelodeon things from the 90s. So just imagine in-between kid-friendly shows, this happens. <laughs> But anyway, Popey is clearly over the top slapstick as well. A lot of Japanese cartoons are produced with adults in mind, or at least young adults. Which means we get series whose spectrum of violence much more closely matches that of live action film and television. Horror, for example, is a hugely popular genre in anime, and its violence is suitably brutal and disgusting. The adaptation of Corpse Party, as over the top as it is, lovingly depicts every detail of its characters' deaths, and is clearly meant to horrify. There's also another, a show that closely resembles the Final Destination series of movies, with its Rube Goldberg-esque death scenes and its tendency to not cut away from the juicy details. The ever-popular Attack on Titan is also no stranger to brutal depictions of violence. And yes, I definitely count that show as horror. What I like about anime, though, is that you will sometimes get shows that are very grounded in their depictions of violence. Paranoia Agent, for example. Little Slugger never knocks anybody's heads off, but all of his victims are very grievously injured, as you would expect by somebody who got hit by a metal baseball bat. And his violence is taken very, very seriously, it's the main catalyst of the story. I mentioned South Park and Family Guy before, mostly to illustrate just how irreverent a lot of western violence is. When it comes to eastern animation, however, I would not be able to list all the shows that treat their violence seriously without having this video be like three hours long. Even a show as silly as Death Note very much treats Light's rampage as the heinous act that it is, and most of the drama of the show is centered around the group of people that are trying to stop him. The seminal Berserk is all about the horrors that the main character Guts was put through, being a soldier from a very early age and making his living as a sellsword. And though he is haunted by literal demons, he's also clearly shown to be suffering some form of PTSD. Now I'm not trying to suggest that all violent animes are mature and grounded. Many of my favorite ones clearly are not. What I'm trying to say is that because Japanese creators and producers understand that animation doesn't strictly have to be for children, their industry is able to produce works that are much more nuanced. This isn't to say that western animation is bad, my upcoming list should show that I love western cartoons. 
but I don't think it can be denied that Japanese animation has produced some much more thought-provoking works. And I think it's because of that understanding that Western networks just seem to lack. Luckily, with the popularity of YouTube animation and the rise of streaming networks, I think we're starting to see a blowback against this kind of thinking. Adult Swim has always been great about this, but their more punk sensibilities and late night scheduling makes me hesitate to use them as a barometer for the trends of the overall industry. Still, I'm confident that we're seeing a rise in more adult-oriented Western animation. Okay, now I would like to end with a couple of disclaimers. Like I said before, I don't claim to be an expert on Japanese culture or entertainment. Also, my claims mostly apply to Japan, the USA, and Canada, as those are the markets I'm most familiar with. I would also like to make it clear that this video I'm talking specifically about television animation. When it comes to the world of feature-length cartoons, I think there's a much greater mix of grounded and slapstick violence in the West. But if I talked about that, this video would be like 19 hours long. Let's just say that Grave of the Fireflies and Plague Dogs would have definitely come up. If you think I've missed anything, or if you'd like to call me a big weeaboo snob boy, feel free to leave a comment and air your grievances. I'd love to be proven wrong about this and would definitely be excited to see more examples of actually mature western series. See you in the next one. Can I help you, cat? Yes? That's my foot. Uh, guys have been taken prisoner by my cat. Somebody please send help. Oh god, he's looking me, he knows. Well, that's okay. He just wanted to go out. He's gonna go murder something.